Well, good morning and welcome back to the, as I always say, the fabulous final segment of City Line. Um, parents, um, this segment is about the most edgiest play that Tacoma Low Theater has ever done in their uh, 100 years of existence. It's a PG-13 play, so if you have some little ones in the room, please take a moment to take them out of the room so we can fully discuss all of the great attributes of this play. Okay, here we go. All right, please join me in welcoming Chris Surface. You are the Managing Artistic Director of Tacoma Little Theater. Welcome back. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, God, you look fabulous. Look at the tie <laughs> and the pocket scarf. You must be doing something good, baby. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of gorgeous men, this man, Mr. Blake R. York, your parents named you so well. It, one syllable each. Easy, easy to yell. It's wonderful. You are the director of the current production I called am. The Pellow Man, which we are here to talk about. Welcome. I don't think I've ever had you on the comfy couch with nope. me. Nope. I've First seen time. your name everywhere. It's so great to meet you in person. Nice to meet you. And this man, oh, Jacob Tice, hello. Hello. Good I got to, good morning. I got to talk with you during uh, the shooting of Liberty Valance, which was so wonderful. Um, and now you're back. You are uh, an actor in The Pillow Man, and your actor's character is called Katurian. Welcome, my dear. Thank and you. I can't wait to get a snippet of your character. All right, so let's talk about this. Uh, this is for Chris and Blake. So The Pillow Man is dark. It's thought-provoking. What made you pick this show? We are always, when we're programming our seasons, looking for a wide blend of theater. Not everything can be a comedy written in the 50s. You sure. have to explore new pieces and new works. And Martin McDonough, who wrote this, is a brilliant playwright. And Blake had seen this show and brought it to me and said, you need to check this out. Okay, I just took a deep inhale. I, this picture, I was like, oh my God. Okay, so... Um, I got a little chill on that one. M M Martin McDonough Blake, first off, tell us what most recently we would know him from. Uh, he was the writer and director of the uh, Oscar nominated and Oscar winning yes. uh, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. One of uh, my all time pick of last year was yeah, I, that one. I Boy, love that. Was good. <laughs> so, what are his other pieces like? Um, I don't know a whole lot of his plays, uh, but. His movies, he's, he's done a few movies. He did theater in the past and moved to film and now doesn't want to go back. Uh, oh, I, I, well. wish he, I wish he would come back to script writing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's what he's really known for is his dark comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very dark and blends it really well with humorous situations and really finds the, the light in all of these Kind of a European things. Cohen brother. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we yeah. go. So um, those pictures, we, we kind of moved through them, but it gave you kind of a view of, of why this is a, a PG-13 and, and also just why it's very, very edgy. So um, let's talk about what was the audition process like for this and how did you handle... Um, all of the darkness during the show. And I want, I want Blake to talk about the audition, and then Jacob, I want you to talk about the darkness during the rehearsals. Uh, for the audition process, uh, I think the big thing that I was looking for going into this is somebody that can really find the humor and uh, be natural about all of these horrible things happening and put them off in a, a way that doesn't put people off right. <laughs> like Fine you're line. dealing with uh, some horrible things but every character a character has to still be likable okay. and we have a cast of people that everybody loves, everybody loves. <laughs> so I, I want to I want to um, I want to insert this question before I talk with you Jacob let's give just the premise of what this play is about Blake mm-hmm uh, it is a, about a writer named Katurian who writes fiction stories in a totalitarian state. And his stories have a lot of bad things that happen in them. Uh, a group of the stories have bad things that happen to children. Well, those things start actually happening in the town he's from. So he's brought in for questioning along with his brother. And they're interrogated about the gruesome tales of his stories. And, and, and the deaths that are surrounding these stories. Jacob, how did you handle all the darkness? This is a dark, dark character. 
Well, it's for me kind of the most important part of this process was having a group around me that I could trust. Yes. Um, having a, a cast around that was supportive and you, you would probably be surprised, I think we were, at how much we were able to laugh at parts of the show, develop a bit of that distance, but um, really coming into and going out of this character, this incredibly stressful situation that, that he's put into, that really did, uh, I had to make a space for Katurian to be in my head and be able to leave him there mm -hmm. um, so that I could step back into myself um, and into, I'm a, I'm a baseline happy fella. <laughs> I can tell, um, yeah. And so really creating that space and creating that difference and working with my castmates to do that, working with Blake to do that, um, such that there was a real difference between our world mm -hmm. and the world of the, of the rehearsal room right. um, as a workspace and the cell. Mm -hmm. I asked you a question about if you were having bad nightmares and you said no, but there's one thing that you have to do when you get home every night that's kind of disturbed you, and what is it? Yeah, there's, at, at the end of, of every night, there's a, a copious amount of blood on my face. Um, and so going, going home late at night after technical run-throughs, after this uh, first weekend of the show, and washing the blood off of my face and out of my hair um, it d did yeah. strike me. Okay. That, uh, that, w that was probably one of the most visceral reactions that I had to the show was when it became the reality of right. washing off the blood. And looking on your sink. Yeah. Give us a sneak peek of uh, your character. Go ahead. All right. Uh, well, I, there's a, a little monologue at the very beginning where Katurian, my character, describes his attitude towards his writing um, and professes his confusion as to why he is in this cell in the first place. Um, and it goes like this. I mean, I agree. You read these things, these stories, supposedly, the police are all this, the, the government is all this, all these political, what would you call them? The, the government should be doing this, <laughs> please. You know what I say? I say, if you've got a political ax to grind, if, if you've got a political whatever you call it, go write an essay. You know, I will know where I stand. Keep your left wing this, keep your right wing that, and tell me a story. You know, a great man once said, the first duty of a storyteller is to tell a story. And I believe in that wholeheartedly. The first duty of a storyteller is to tell a story. Or was it the only duty of a storyteller is to tell a story? Yeah, it might have been the only duty of a storyteller is to tell a story. I, I can't remember. But, but, but anyway, that's what I do. I tell stories, no acts to grind, no anything to grind, no social anything whatsoever. And that's why I, I can't see if my stories are why you brought me here. I can't see why it might be unless something political slipped in by accident or, or something that seemed political, in which case, you know, show me where it is. Show me where that is and I will take it straight out. Just burn it, you know? You know what I mean? Okay, we're just gonna end it right there. <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk about what comes up next. Uh, coming up after this, we take you on one of Shakespeare's most cheery shows ever. <laughs> uh, we bring you Macbeth. A Scottish play. A Scottish play. Yes. Uh, and that inside a theater, because it's a superstition, but yes. Pug Bujot is directing Macbeth. It's a fabulous cast and a wonderful uh, adaptation of the script. So we're very excited for that one. That starts in June. Nice. And then summer's right around the corner. TLT is known for its summer activities for children. What's what's on tap? Enrollments are happening now. We've yes. already started enrolling. We have coming up for our first session, Mulan Jr., which is based on the Disney animated yeah. film, which is a lot of fun. And that's about half full already. So if you want to get your spot in the camp, please make sure you sign up quickly. Then we also have coming up for our second session a little later in the summer is Hairspray Junior. Yeah. So it's a story of Hairspray and it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got some great teaching artists coming this summer to work with the students. I love that. And then of course we've got uh, Murder Mysteries, if that wasn't enough. <laughs> <laughs> Murder Mysteries, which are a little more comedic than yes. Pillow Man. But uh, our next one is A Condo to Kill For. And that is May 17th through the 20th. It is uh, $50 per person. That includes a four-course dinner at the Social Bar and Grill. Oh, wow. The show. So it's a lot of fun to go down there. And they've got a great little room that we use. And it's a great cast of actors from all around our community and directed by Karen Christensen. 
uh, who's been doing the last few murder mysteries and is our office manager. To I love theater. that. Um, we are have less than a minute left, and I know that we have um, some exciting things planned for the season of 100, 100 season, which happens really in the fall, and we've got to have you back for at least two segments on that. Do we have some new chairs planned? We are planning on some new chairs. We started a campaign with the opening of the Villa <laughs> yeah. Man. Uh, our chairs are almost 62 years old, so we're figuring we need and to And they feel an, like it. They feel like it. They are lumpy. <laughs> they they are creaky. And uh, so we've started a campaign where you can help uh, get a new chair into Tacoma Little Theater and get your name on that chair. They're going to be five inches of padding, cup holders, armrests that go up and down. And they're $300 for one chair to sponsor one chair and $500 to sponsor two. And it's going to be about an 18-month process that we go through to raise the money and also do a few other upgrades in the auditorium at the same time. I'm almost having like a shock factor because I'm thinking about how do you get rid of that history of those old chairs? But man, those chairs look nice. And there are two sample chairs in the auditorium. All right. right. Well, when I'm there Friday night to watch Pillow Man, I'm going to sit in the chair because my okay. daughter and I might need, need those. All right. How do people get involved? Uh, visit uh, our website. Mm -hmm. And we have got a great thanks. Blake is also our technical director. He is. That's one old job. He's always looking for volunteers to help with the there set building go. process. Mm -hmm. And if you go to our website, there's a click here to volunteer and we'll get you on our volunteer list. I love that. You three are amazing. From, from planning a season to directing to just really stepping in. Thank you. Thank you, all three of you, so much for bringing this play to the stage and for the conversations that are going to happen after they, people see this. Those conversations are long overdue, and I hope that those conversations help us think about uh, what we dream about, what we write about, and what we accept as reality. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. That wraps up another great segment of City Line. It's always a pleasure and a privilege to be in your home. Wow, have we given you a lot of things to think about in this past hour. So please, go out there, be a part of that tapestry, and above all, pay it forward. And when you come back, as always, we'll be waiting for you right here at City Line. Take care. Mm -hmm.